So my sister went to college today, so I thought it would be a good day to film this video. So I'm going to start with some general things and then move on to specifically A2. So I just finished my A-levels, I ended up with an A star, an A and a B, and I got A star in English Lit, and I got a B in English Language. Sadness, I was hoping for an A. And then I got an A in Classics. And I got into the uni I wanted to go to, so yay. You could say I've been successful in my A-levels. <laughs> so this is not really how to get like high grades in your A-levels, because I think that's really dependent on a lot of things that might not be necessarily in your control. but. These are things that I would say work towards a good, successful time at A-levels, no matter what you're trying to get. The first thing that you need to do, because now is the best time because it's September and you've just started, or maybe you haven't even started yet, but either way, now is the beginning, so keep organised. Keep all the sheets properly organised in the right folder. There will come a time in your second year where you just realise that there's that one sheet and it has the thing that you need on it and you have no clue where it is because it was two years ago. <sighs> and this is the thing with A-levels. Quite often, they go through things so quickly that you just don't even, like, you don't go over that again once it's done. Pretty much, it's quite often, we did that one time, you're meant to learn it, you're meant to remember it. So you kind of got to keep all your bits in order. I would say get ring binders for each one and maybe dividers just per module or topic or whatever, but a ring binder for each, maybe even a lever arch binder, not a binder, lever arch folder, just because you get a lot of paper. You get so much paper. My next point is do the fucking work. I'm serious. I mean it. You have to do it. Just do it. Do it when you get it. Do it on time. Do it properly. It's not worth not doing it properly. For so many years at school, you end up doing all these things that don't actually add up to anything. But everything in A-levels pretty much does. So you might as well just do it and do it properly. This is a big one. Make sure your notes make sense. Don't do the thing where you're writing something down and you're like, I don't know what this means, or that doesn't make sense, or I'll remember what that means later. You won't. You won't. I promise you that you will not understand what you meant. <laughs> so you might as well make sure your notes make sense and are cohesive. Give them to somebody else to read to see if they understand what you mean. It's not worth it because it'll be two days before your exam and you're like, what does it mean? Because I don't remember, what, is, what does it mean? I don't know. I don't know what it means. Because I think that's the beautiful thing of making this right now, if you're about to start your A-levels. This is it. This is the beginning. You can, you can do this. You can apply these things. It's not two days for your exam, unless you're watching this two days for your exam. And you're thinking, why didn't I just, why didn't I just keep that one sheet? I should have kept that one sheet. Whatever is it where there's like one sheet? <gasps> plenty. Better get plenty wet. <laughs> revise properly for mocks because this will do wonders for your brain. Every time you revise for things it consolidates it and you remember it even better. The, the more you revise it the better you know it and by the time you actually get to your exam you'll know certain things so well because if you have looked at them repeatedly it's your brain just is like I know it. I know the answers and it's amazing. Pay attention to the feedback your teachers give you. This is particularly important for like essay subjects like English or classics or I don't know, anthropology, that was very specific. If you're repeatedly doing the same thing wrong, then you need to learn how to do that thing right, because that's clearly a problem for you. If you don't know what you're doing and you're kind of all over the place and your feedback is always mixed, try and isolate the things that you consistently do well, or the things that where you have done it well, how is that different from where you didn't do it well? Speak to your tutors. They're literally the ones marking your work and teaching you. They're the ones who understand what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong, and they can tell you how to do it right. Magic. It's good to try and have a good relationship with your tutors and be able to speak to them about things that you want. Like if you wanna get a better grade, speak to them about it. Ask them how you can do it, because that's their job. <laughs> their job is to help you. Do things when you have the time. The thing about A-levels is, there's no kind of set routine about when you get homework. Just sometimes you just end up with like three essays that you've got to do over a week. Do it when you get them. Do not do all three of them on the last day because it's not worth it and you'll hate yourself all of that day because it's not worth it. It's so much easier if you just get on and you do it. I mean, obviously doing things when you have the time affords you lots of fun things like being able to ask questions and find out things if you don't know what it is. It also means you end up with actually still having all the things you're meant to be writing the essay on because there's so many times where you leave it like two weeks and you're like, 
oh, I don't even know what the question is. And if you were like me and you have left it and you're in a class where everybody asks you for what it is, guess what? When you don't know, nobody else knows. And then you're like, well then, this is it. I don't even remember what it was. Don't even know how to find out what it was. Now this is more kind of A2 stuff. Get the AS stuff down when you have the time. So first year, try and lay down things, make sure you've got it because the sec second year is so much revising your whole first year and learning new stuff and revising new stuff so that you can do well in your exam. So really, you kind of got to do a lot of revision so you might as well get the first year stuff down or have it at least so you know where to find everything and everything is already sorted out because you will thank yourself later. <laughs> Repeatedly consolidating your knowledge over the year, like especially in like this term until about Christmas, going over first year stuff is probably something where you have the most time to do it. And if you're watching this in like December and you're like, I really don't, it gets worse. I'm sorry. It gets worse <laughs> so you might as well do it i mean really you could have done it over the summer maybe but maybe you didn't and that's okay you'll still be fine i didn't really do anything over my summer but i wish i had <laughs> oh because some things are so difficult to remember the last thing i would say this is kind of like for english lit stuff really or maybe english language or other things i don't know things where you get extra reading that's given to you by your teacher do it because there's usually some kind of kernel there that will be useful. There's one, there's always those things that you pick up in like English lit kind of subjects where you always have one thing that you can just always go back to and just get it. Like um, whenever you're doing an Othello essay and there's something about him being black, you just go, oh, well, in the 1500s, the devil was depicted as black and boom, context, done, moving on. There's always stuff like that that you find out and you're like, well, that can go straight in. <laughs> I would say you don't necessarily have to do extra reading that, you know, is self-motivated you can if you want to i still got an a star and i didn't do that so it really kind of depends on what else you're doing finally if a little cheesily but still very important look after yourself don't die in a2 because it's so intense and i get it and it's scary and it feels like you're just kind of like and you're just moving towards this thing so quickly you don't have time and you're just like oh my god all the time but it's so important that you just take evenings off like you do maybe the homework for the next day if you need to but then after like eight or nine you just you know relax you have a bath you watch a film and don't especially like first year if you feel mega stressed first year, it's probably going to be fine. Because especially since the way they do A-levels now, none of them are modular. I think they're all linear now. So none of your first year exams will count. So really, make sure you look after yourself that year. Have a good time. Go to parties. Go out. Do whatever you want. And, but, I mean, stay on top of stuff. Don't bomb, you know. <laughs> but second year, I would say you're good to go out until really, like, depending on when your birthday is and stuff like that, if you want to go out, like, out, out. I would say... You can go out, like, two months before the exam, but I wouldn't go any, you know, any time after that. Because, for one thing, you just get tired and hungover, and then it interrupts all the other things. <laughs> You're also really tired, so... And also, jobs and things. In my first year, I just had an occasional job, um, and that worked out fine. And then in my second year, I just had a Saturday job, which I would say is very intense because you're basically working like six days a week. And by the time I got to my exams, I had to have time off for my exams. You have to. I know that's a, something that a lot of people can't help if you really need to go. And then I would never say quit your job if you're in like circumstances, which mean you can't. But I would hope that you can have time off or if you can save your holiday pay until that time or be able to cut down shifts or move them so they really don't interrupt with your exams because it is so difficult to revise for exams anyway and if you have a job as well that's occupying like more than one day a week I'm gonna say it's gonna be quite difficult and I know that some people can't help that but I would hope that your work will be understanding and help you move it around so it's not in the way of things thank you for watching I hope this is helpful please don't stress like now Pretty much you're good not to stress until about like second year, like Christmas time. You're probably already stressed by then because coursework, but if you're going into your second year, it's going to be a lot, but it's one year of your life and then you'll just be like, oh, it's over now. Like I am. I'm like, I have nothing to do until like October. Good luck in your A-levels. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a nice day. Don't stress too much about A-levels if this is literally like your first day. You'll be okay. I promise. <laughs> you don't need to get too stressed already. That's what second year is for. 
<laughs> just as a side note, if you're watching this and you're not from my channel, I mostly make book videos, so I do have some English literature videos, which I will link here. That might be the wrong side. Maybe this side. I don't know. But mostly I make book videos. Not really. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a nice day and I shall see you later. Goodbye.